There's a lot of talk out there about the second stimulus check. Um, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos that have something about the stimulus check in their titles. And there's a lot of articles actually, like I'll just show you this real quick. Um, several articles, uh, if you, if you just kind of search on Google, uh, from today, actually stimulus check money, $1,200 payment could still be headed, could still be headed your way in 2020. Uh, second stimulus check payment, right? How quickly might the IRS send you money? But from Forbes five hours ago, stimulus package negotiations stall. These three facts should push Congress to action. I've even seen a couple of YouTube videos where people were basically saying that uh, the president was going to executive order $1,200 checks. Um, you know, I, I think we can remain hopeful about it, but, um, for now, I'm just going to make my own stimulus check. Like, I just don't see any other way. In fact, this week so far, I have made f over $400. I've made about $450 this week alone. So this has definitely been um, the biggest week, I think, in my trading career, my newfound trading career. Sounds weird to say, but it's like, I, I don't I don't see myself like giving this up anytime soon. Um, so we're going to talk about that. I traded Facebook calls this morning, ended up leaving a lot of money on the table. Look at Facebook guys. I I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you Facebook. Um, Facebook has been on a roll. Okay. So this is Facebook from today, right? It, it was even crazier than yesterday's push, right? We, we thought yesterday was a big day for Facebook. Today was even bigger. And look at my, these are my trades down here. These are my trades down here. And I left all that money on the table. But you know what? Like, I like trading the open or, or I like trading in the morning, just getting in, getting out, taking my profit. A, a lot of, you know, that's just hindsight, right? To say, oh, I should have held this. And it would have been worth a lot of money. And I do want to come up with some kind of strategy where I can hold these plays, some of these plays maybe a little bit longer or have another account where I hold them a little bit longer and really try to milk them for all they're worth. But uh, we're, we're going to talk about all that. We'll talk about my plays. Um, before we get into my day uh, trading, just a couple of main points that I want to go over with you guys. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 83 points. Um, the futures were actually down a little bit on the Dow. So uh, it's a good thing, right? I mean, the, the stock market's definitely rallying right now. The S&P is up. Uh, NASDAQ is up. And we're seeing all-time highs right now. So, you know be cautious, I guess, is especially if you're investing, if you're putting money long-term into the market, what I'm doing is I'm being cautious. I'm keeping track of the stuff that I'm involved in. Um, and I'm constantly looking for new opportunities. Um, you have Salesforce, uh, now, you know, now I think Salesforce, didn't they get added to the, the Dow yesterday? Anyways, they rallied more than 26 percent um after their uh, uh their uh, uh you know uh, results for earnings uh the previous quarter came out netflix also jumped up 12 percent and facebook closed eight percent higher uh i'm thinking facebook might actually have one more day where it's bullish. We'll see. I, I think we probably will get like a Friday sell off from, from some of this. Uh, Apple is doing a stock split. So uh, just be aware of that, right? Especially if you're buying Apple at $500 a share, which I think is absolutely crazy. It's a $2 trillion company, guys. Um, they're doing a stock split, which I think will be over with by the 28th. We had some positive news with the vax, right? Uh, also, China apparently is dosing people already, right? So when that kind of news comes out, you'll see the airlines, the cruise ships, the banks, um, maybe oil. Those stocks will kind of respond, hopefully respond positively to good vax news. And also, we have the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell is set to uh, deliver a highly anticipated speech 
today. I haven't seen it. I, I don't know if it's later on this evening or what, but, uh, you know, Federal Reserve coming out, I guess, to talk about the weekly jobless claims data. Um, you know, when it comes to the pandemic, the cases are going down, which is a good thing. Um, I don't know what's going to happen between now and, you know, November, right? But I, I think there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on here, right? I mean, there's definitely political situations uh, that are, or I should say, you know, political motivations behind a lot of what we are uh, seeing or what we're told to be true. So anyways, without getting too much further into all of that messiness, um, let's go ahead and talk. I, there's a new feature basically that I want to uh, add into my video and that feature that, that segment, I guess I should say is like the video of the day that I want to share with you guys. And this video is by a YouTuber, uh, Mark Moss. Uh, he has basically a, a personal finance channel, right? He's got about uh, 14,000 subscribers. Well, he released this video yesterday, all right, on the 25th, entitled Deep State Battle Causes Danger in the Markets. Get prepared now. This is a very interesting video, and I'm recommending this to all of my viewers because he talks about how big tech and 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 the stocks in, in big tech... Um, Big Tech is in this weird position where he, he says, he breaks, basically breaks it down and says that, um, you know, Big Tech obviously doesn't like the president, right? They, they, they support Biden. They would rather have Biden. But they're in this weird scenario where they're doing well. Their stocks are doing well. Uh, there's a lot of confidence in their companies, even though there's, uh, you know, government regulators coming in trying to shake things up a little bit. Uh, Big tech, if they continue to do well into November in the stock market, because, you know, it's really tech that's pulling the stock market up as high as it's going. Uh, if they continue to do that, it has a very good chance of giving Trump the win, right? The president's probability of reelection becomes much greater. Uh, and it makes it a lot harder for Biden to win. Now, if the stock market were to crash and uh, these you know, tech giants and, and just the stock market in general wasn't doing so well, uh, obviously that's going to make the president look worse and that will raise Biden's probability. So he talks about this and the, basically the question he asked at the end of the video uh, you know, for viewers to respond to is, um, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think that Right, we're we're going to see the stock market continue to rise into November, possibly handing Trump the election, or is something going to go down, and uh, perhaps you know, uh, uh, Silicon Valley will give up some of their billions of dollars in profit to give, you know, a higher chance of. Uh, uh, Biden actually winning. It's just a weird place that they're caught in. And then he also talks about how big tech is, uh, you know, how much they control everything, right? They control the information. They control the news. They control what you can sell. They control what you can buy. They control what you can. I mean, they're controlling absolutely everything, yet they're calling it capitalism. And then regulators come in and they say, oh, well, you can't regulate us. You can't break us up. You can't regulate us because you're dependent on us. Everybody needs us. Um, and this is capitalism, right? We're, we're just uh, uh, on top of, uh, you know, on top of the capitalistic food chain. Uh, you can't regulate us because you need us, right? And, and it's really, I mean, the, the word that Mark Moss uses is totalitarianism. Uh, so, just generally speaking, guys, a very, very interesting video, especially if, you know, you're interested in the political stuff a little bit. He doesn't get political with it, but he he sort of explains the potential political scenarios that are going on behind this crazy, you know, stock market rally. Um, he talks about the Fed adding all this liquidity and, um, you know, this this era that we're living in, it's very serious. You know, in a lot of ways, the fall of the, you know, second Roman Empire, so to speak, 
is kind of here, right? We're, we're, we're sort of living it. Um, but on the other hand, you know, there, as long as the dollar doesn't crash, right? There's going to be a lot of opportunity, um, you know, especially in the markets. I, I know a lot of people are sort of hedging all of this with, with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and stuff. Um, and I haven't, you know, I've only been in the market now for like six months, but I'm being cautious because I know of the different crashes that have happened in the past, right? The crash in 08, um, the, I think there was a tech bubble crash in 2001, uh, there was a crash in 87 and there were, there was the really big stock market crash in 29. So, you know, I, I'm aware of these other times where the stock market has completely crashed. So I, I'm definitely being cautious, uh, but it is kind of a weird situation where big tech, you know, when you think about it, big tech and how well they're doing actually might single-handedly push the president to re-election. And that's not what big tech wants. Big tech wants Biden, um, or at least that's what they tell us, right? That's what they want us to think. So uh, definitely check out that video. It's thought provoking. And Mark Moss has some, some pretty good content when it comes to personal finance. He usually doesn't do videos like that. So I wanted to share that with you guys. That's a new kind of featured segment in my uh, show. All right, let's get into my play because we are now 11 minutes into uh, the video. So let's talk about the P&L real quick, right? We are up 7%, 7.4% in the account, um, which is about $118. Now, I'm very happy with that. My account is $1,700 now. Uh, this week alone, I've made $400, and I don't think really there's any other way I could make $400, um, you know, like I have. There's really no other way to do it other than trading options. So, uh, Today, again, we're trading Facebook. Facebook is a new favorite of mine. You know, I, I, I don't even use Facebook, right? To be honest with you, I'm not that fond of Facebook. You guys know why. But uh, it's a very bullish stock right now. There's a lot of opportunity and it really moves, you know, especially first thing right at the open. It really, really moves. So my first entry was right here at the open, 930. Uh, again, trading the open, it, it's kind of sketchy, right? I can understand why people don't want to trade the open and they'd rather wait for a few minutes. 50, some people don't even start trading until like 9.45. Uh, this week, I have enjoyed trading the open. Trading the open has really uh, pushed me to new levels in my account, right? So I, I entered at 9.30. Um, we had a lot of bull volume, right? Huge bull volume, right? This is like institutional volume. And um, we did open up at a kind of like a, a, a supply zone area or some kind of zone that I had... Uh, uh, previously mapped out well it's not yeah it was kind of like a pre-market supply zone that i had mapped out we burst through that we burst through the pre-market high you can see this dotted line right here that is the pre-market high that i charted out um I, I actually wasn't sure what to expect with facebook today i i thought because we had such a kind of a bullish day yesterday that maybe we'd get a little bit of a pullback but no we didn't right facebook went to the moon and to be honest with you, I'm I'm feeling a little bit of FOMO right now because I was holding on to uh, contracts, uh, calls, right? Let, let, let me see where, uh, uh, let's see. So when I bought them, they were about like $300, $330. They're now worth, yeah, they're, they're worth like, ugh, they're worth like $1,000, guys. Like the contracts I was holding and I sold for like, you know, 400 or whatever, they're worth so much money right now. Um, but I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry too much about it because I, I'm just, you know, I'm here to scalp. Uh, I will incorporate a strategy where I hold on to these contracts a little bit longer and see if I can, you know, I, I would like to sort of let one ride and just let it ride all day until the close on a really bullish day like this. But, um, going back to my plays and stuff, I entered right at the open. Um, and, you know, there were reasons for that because it broke the levels uh, that I had charted in pre-market and we had the very bullish volume. I got out, this is my first exit at 9.33, right? So, or no, 9.32, right? So you have 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, right? I, I, that's my first exit. Then I enter again on this red candle at uh, 934 and then i'm out at the top of this green candle at 935 so the trade litter it's three different uh 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 entrances and exits 
entries and exits, but I'm considering it just one trade, right? Like this is one trade. And it went well, right? I could have held it a little bit longer. Maybe I should have, right? Like maybe I should have spent more time and kind of held through some of this and, and, and really pushed my profit margin. Maybe I should have loaded up on contracts down here, you know, bought a couple of them instead of just one. Um, I feel like I could have made out with more money, right? Had, uh, had I maybe been a little bit more aware that the stock was going to move as much as it did. And I had other opportunities that I just didn't take because I didn't want to mess up my profit. To be honest with you, like I, I shouldn't be in this mindset where I'm like afraid to trade, but like once I get my profit first thing in the morning, because I've had such bad experiences where like I sort of over trade and, and then I end up walking away with either less profit, no profit or in the hole because I've had so many days where I've done that. I like to just sort of get in, get my profit and then just walk away. But I think it was like around here where, you know, I was, I was looking at the level two. I was like, Oh, I should really get back in. And I, and I never did. Right. Cause I still have $455 I could have traded with. So I could have bought one more contract uh, and just sort of let it ride, and, and I didn't do it. But it doesn't matter because the the opportunities are every day, right? That the market always provides us opportunities. And even if Facebook pulls back tomorrow, right? Because Facebook has moved now two days in a row, right? And, and I can't believe how high it got today. Like, what what is that? Three hundred and seven dollars. Um, I would not be surprised if tomorrow we get a pullback, but even if we do get a pullback and Facebook goes back down to like 280, right? Maybe it won't do that. Maybe 290, 300, whatever. Um, I can always play the short side, right? But again, that comes with its own risks because playing the short side in this market is very dangerous because this market just keeps going up, up, up and away. It never stops. But all in all, I'm happy with my uh, P&L, right? It's more money than I was making last week. Uh, I seem to have a good, you know, uh, at least with Facebook, right? I have got, I've got a, a, a good little routine here where I can make, you know, a hundred, couple hundred dollars in the morning. Uh, if I could do that consistently for a while, like I'm going to be very Gucci. I'm going to be very, very happy with where I'm at. Yes, you know, part of me is thinking, oh, you got to start, you know, taking a little bit more of a chance and, and maybe stretching these trades out and really riding them out. You know, part of me is thinking like, you know, part of me is looking at this thinking like, you know, you, you left too much money on the table, but uh, I don't want to be greedy. And I am very, very thankful. Um, there is, you know, signs of very good bull momentum going into tomorrow because of, you know, you've got this, right? This is institutions right here buying at the close and we'll just have to see what happens tomorrow. But regardless, I'll probably end up trading Facebook again tomorrow. The only other uh, stocks I was watching were uh, PayPal. PayPal also did pretty well, but it's still sort of in this supply zone. I want to wait for it to get above this supply zone before I really touch it myself. Um, and then I think I was looking at Apple, right? This is So those are the three stocks I'm following. Right. Part of my plan, um, you know, going into Monday after sort of pondering about this last weekend was that I, I was following too many stocks. I was following Neo and Square and uh, 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 Blink and, and AMD and Intel. And I was just following way too much and, and stuff that I can't really make very good money on. So I'm going to what I'm going to focus on is Facebook, Apple, PayPal, right? I've got fintech, I've got hardware and sort of like software, uh, uh, iPhone kind of thing. And then uh, uh, Facebook, right? More, I guess you could call it like social media and big tech. So I think those are really three great companies that um, I can make a lot of money on. And, and Facebook, like I said, I've made about $400 now off of Facebook this week. Um, so very grateful, very humble, just humbled by the, the entire experience. You know, it's... Uh, Take me a few months to get here, but I really do think I got the hang of uh, finally get starting to get the hang of this, you know. Um, and I, I'm I'm due for a loss, right? I am due for a loss. I haven't taken a loss since Thursday, so I'm probably due for a loss or at least a losing trade soon. But I'm just gonna keep riding this momentum from Facebook, and, and even if it loses momentum and kind of pulls back a little bit, um, I, I'm gonna play play the short side and and you know still be able to profit. So I, I will be looking for a pullback because we've had such a, a bullish week, but we, you never know tomorrow. I, I think it was Thursday, right? Yeah. So tomorrow we could get a, another very bullish day. 
uh, with uh, uh, um, uh, Facebook. We might get another bullish day with with, with PayPal. Um, other than that, you know, I, I think some of the um, value stocks are starting to rise. There's other stocks that I'm interested in investing in. Foot Locker is one that I'm currently looking at right now because they are extremely profitable and they're ready to sort of go into the new era. Uh, and also there's a, 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 a Mirajuana stock called, uh, I think it's called, well, it's called Planet 13. It's not available on Robinhood, I don't think, but you can buy it on, on TD Ameritrade. It's uh, an over-the-counter penny stock, but it's uh, definitely one that I'm looking at, one that I'm interested in. I get a lot of these ideas from the financial education channel as well, uh, just to let you guys know. So, um, all in all, you know, grateful, happy, uh, definitely going to be you know, trading tomorrow or at least looking to trade and, uh, you know, leave your comments down below. Let me know where are you putting your money stocks, uh, crypto gold. I, I definitely want to get into the gold too. As soon as I get my account up, I'm going to start diversifying, you know, trying to get into the crypto, trying to get into gold. I'd like to explore Forex. I've been studying Forex, but it seems really sketchy to be honest with you. Like I, I, you know, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but Forex sounds interesting to me. Um, and, and I see a lot of people online talking about it. So, you know, I, I want to hedge what I'm doing in the stock market with some other assets and stuff like that. But let me know where are you putting your money? Comment down below, give the video a like, and as always, this is CMC broadcasting. I'll see you next time. God bless.